Hey guys, welcome to the One Life Podcast, here with Cordell Nixon. Uh, Cordell is a personal trainer, nutritionist, opposing coach, used to be a bodybuilder, and just an all-around nice guy who's in amazing shape. Nice Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, i got a ton of stuff I want to talk to you about, um, trying to work out where to start, right. but I want to know, so you're, you're in your 30s now, how old are you exactly? Uh, 32 plus 1. 32 plus one. <laughs> what got you into lifting, being in shape, nutrition, and how long have you been doing it for? Yeah. Uh, my whole life, my family's actually military background. So my dad's a Marine. My, my parents have always been active. My dad's a Marine. Yeah. So it's a whole active lifestyle. My whole entire life I've been around just activities where I'm never sitting on my butt at all. My, my parents did track and field, so I was always into running and I'm on this shot pit also. But like the health background is just being from military being a military brat so seeing it all the time my parents having an active lifestyle so i have the active lifestyle natural that's all i know that's all i've been around gotcha but the bodybuilding came from my parents uh more so my mom's side she's big into power and well we'll say bodybuilding she's into your mom is yeah really yeah so she got me into actually weightlifting really i yeah. did not know that when my dad would deploy that to overseas she got me into the gym when i was about like 12 13 years old. really yeah. you started really young and so I feel old because like I started really young. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> the gym. Yeah. How how important do you think is as a parent being a role model, mm. like is like for you personally and right. you being a father yourself for your son? Mm. Yeah, I always say like our first kids teachers are going to be the parents. That's the first teacher kids have regarding like direction, structure, personality, you know, good or bad habits. So I I feel like that's that's most important. With the, yeah. Regarding what they actually instill and in, and in that they give their kids. Even from food, they give them the actual like healthy food, or that's all they know. That's all they, they kind of stick like with. Leading by example, eating the healthy exactly. food, doing the exercise. Right. And a lot of times, you know, uh, nothing gets parents at all because it, it's a lot, as you know yourself. Yeah, a, parent, a lot goes into parenting, and the food may not be the priority. It might just be be able to provide for their kid. But if you have the opportunity or the actual uh, ability to do that, like having them have structure regarding food choices is probably most important um just as important as just learning in general yeah learning their abcs they should also learn like what's healthy i've got a nine-year-old and he, he knows what macros are he knows what the three macros are gotcha and it's just it's not it's not forced or just more so he's been around his whole life so he knows the curiosity has been there and he's yeah, asked us yeah Precisely. kind of my biz my daughter does with like business questions because right. i'm she's around it all the time yeah that's all you know gotcha that's interesting so by your parents leading by example you kind of follow so are your brothers the same yeah well at, at the young age they are you know it, it was never forced them on I, I, I have four brothers yeah no sisters it, was, it wasn't forced at all you know that it's just what they instilled and then as we got as they got older you know my parents got a little more lax like i'm the second oldest um we i have three little brothers so i think i, I noticed with my even my older brother i noticed as we had well, my parents, as they had more kids, they kind of got more and more relaxed with us. We were more military. Gotcha. After that, they kind of got more relaxed over the years. I feel like that's pretty so, normal, though, isn't it? <laughs> so they got a little less like, oh, eat your vegetables. They were like, uh, you didn't eat it. Gotcha. Cool, you know? Yeah, they're like it's sick yeah. of pushing that. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So when you started lifting weights at 12, when did you start getting serious? Like, what would you call the serious mm -hmm. point with it? Well, my main thing is just... Uh, I think from the start, you know, I, I, like a lot of people could probably relate. I had some issues with self-esteem uh, when I was when I was actually younger. I don't tell people about this a lot, but I had some issues with my self-esteem, with my appearance. You know, going through puberty, you have you might fluctuate in weight. You might you might have issues with maybe like acne or whatnot. But I had issues with my weight. My parents were like, "Oh, that's not the case." I was always in shape, but for me, I had insecurities with my weight, and so I started working out even before the before that age. I was doing just the usual sit-ups and push-ups, but the gym. Is what really gave me like a, like a direction, you know. Gotcha. Which, regarding what do you mean issues with your weight? Like, um, were, you, were you overweight? I thought, we... I thought I was overweight. You know, like you but know how you kids, when you're. I would say I am. Just me being like looking back as an adult now, looking at, at myself at that age, I would say you're overweight. But you know, regarding like body fat wise, like we know people go up and down when you're going to puberty. You will gain some weight. You will yeah. have. Uh, you know, your baby fat's going away, so you're actually putting on actual fat, depending on what you're eating, how you're training, how your body fat is, body type. All those things play a big part to how much you're eating, how much you're expending. That's the thing with two parents don't, you know, may necessarily realize that, you know, kids can still store. Like they say, oh, it's baby fat. Baby fat's when they're babies. But when they get to the age where they're not babies anymore, I think they're storing. They're actually storing. Okay. And, you know, when you go through puberty, your hormones do change to where you might have high estrogen. 
which you know people say oh like for instance like 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 uh like male boobs like gyno yeah you can get that through going through puberty um if you have a, a spike in estrogen that can be through yeah. diet or just just maybe just genetics as well okay um so i felt that i had a little bit of uh high body fat just me personally so i started doing push-ups and sit-ups and crunches i, I got the total jump for my birthday there's an old school product called the app slide maybe you heard of that no, I don't. it's like a like a roller uh, oh okay like a, like yeah a, but you but it's a fancy one and i would Whenever you would travel, I had that in my backpack. Or I put it in my bag and I traveled with it. Like gotcha. I wouldn't say insecurities. I just had goals. Gotcha. You know, my mom what was age like, was this? This was uh man. This was like 10, 11. Oh really? Yeah, 10, 11. So really young. Yeah, really young. It's really, really young. weird. Uh, one one cool thing is um, being like military. A lot of a lot of families in the military are really really fit, or they yeah might be bodybuilders and marines or sailors and like actual really fit. So some of their kids. Um, were, are, are following their parents and they want to be really fit too. So you, I had a kid um, in my class, second grade, by the way, and he was just diced. He had really, he had like crazy quads. He had yeah. abs. He was diet face. Like what the heck? Really? This and so I was even more motivated. I was, I, I'd follow him around. Like and this gotcha. guy, like, this kid literally had like what a uh, male physique would ideally look like. A gotcha. Detail, he had it young. Second, third grader. I'm like, I never thought about that because you're right. All the military families are more active. They're healthy. They're if that's not, a good environment to be yeah. around if not they're fired you know <laughs> yeah 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 so that's it's, interesting so it's 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 it was kind of like always around me it was never really it's all, I, all i've known and i just adapted and adapted as i got older with that lifestyle gotcha mm -hmm. what when did you start competing and what made you like actually compete compete yeah well people don't know nowadays but they used to have a thing called bodybuilding magazines <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i remember those yeah uh, flip through the pages but yeah um my mom got my, my very first bodybuilding magazine uh, when I was in uh, summer going into fourth grade. Fourth grade, yeah, jeez. Yeah, and I was you're, like, you're young, young, yeah, right? So like, was, and people, well, when kids are looking at opposite, they're looking at like toys and rollerblades, and I'm looking at. Yeah, I was looking at surfing magazines. Yeah, surfing, yeah. yeah. So I'm looking at you know Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lee Priest and Frank Zane gotcha. and all these guys who yeah. bodybuild and grown men. I'm like, I want that physique, and so. Gotcha. Summer, you know, summer going into fourth grade, I was I was looking at the magazine trying to emulate what they were doing. With my total gym, if you guys know what total gym is, it's 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 uh, old school. But they still make them actually, but it's been around for about over twenty years. They're still making them. Chuck Norris used to be is a still big advocate. He endorses it. He's been oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. His wife, and when you see him, he's a, he's a badass. Like okay, yeah, yeah. yeah Chuck Norris. Yeah. Everyone wants to be Chuck and, Norris. Yeah. I remember the Bruce Lee movies when he was in that. And it's just it's just definitely gotcha. showing our age right now. We're showing our age with the total gym and the Bruce and the Chuck Norris. Gotcha. But, um, yeah, that's that's where I started. Like a summer of summer going to fourth grade, and then I never stopped. But there was a kid, surprisingly, that actually was actually more ahead of me. He would, he was just like a like a mini male. He was just he was just yeah. You don't ever see kids with like just no 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 shoulder caps like tear drops in their quads. That's what he and like, gotcha. And he loved to be active. His dad would at twenty two. His dad would literally pack him chicken breast and broccoli. Oh no way! Chicken breast <laughs> and, and he broccoli. would eat it. This is the second third grade eating chicken and broccoli. Huh? And that's, you need it because that's, that's like, crazy. Like, that's all you know. It's like, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is good. What do you that's, mean? that's crazy because yeah. the only thing it would, I would send home would be the fruit and the healthy stuff right, when I was know, a kid. PB and J, kids you know that's that. interesting. He, he probably never knew what PBJ was. Probably he, this is a second, third grader. That's not eating that. You know? What um, you wanted to look better, but why? Why did you want to look better besides mm -hmm. like self esteem or like? Yeah, it was it was main it was mainly to kind of boost my confidence. Okay, I had issues with with you know self esteem confidence because of my my personal thoughts on my physique so i felt you know if i look a certain way that i'll get more attention to get more more friends and more followers and yeah people oh you know i'll, I'll actually have a boost okay um what about with girls too was yeah, that on the were you thinking about that back I then or? About, yeah, I, I, had, I had my age range when it comes to you know how kids don't like girls at that age yet yeah. i was still just i wanted the guys to look at me and the guys to, yeah so it wasn't <laughs> about the girls at all it wasn't about the girls yet. gotcha yeah, was, not yet was, not was, yet yeah, <laughs> not, not yet yeah it was about just the, just being the cool kid and looking a certain part because we all know like having muscles is cool yeah, but yeah. At the second third grade we have no way in hell like how to achieve that you know but it, because we don't care to look at magazines and really Hey mom, how do you get? You know, we don't we don't ask how to get guns at you know how to get twenty one inch pythons at second third grade. Yeah. yeah, so it's and most people never ask that at all. In, like, at yeah, all, especially your parents. Like, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Mm. Um, when was your first competition? Like, when do you actually get on stage and yeah, talk to was, me about that? I was a very young age too. Um, this this was like my we'll say bodybuilding career started when I was living in Okinawa, Japan. 
like I said, my parents are military, living on a base in Okinawa. Okay. And I'd go to the base gym to work out, and they had an actual like an online contest. Um, oh, did they really? Yeah, that they had where you just send photos. And, oh, gotcha. And it was called Teen Bodybuilder of the Week on bodybuilding.com. I hope they have it still. I'm curious. But um, I would send photos every week and try and try and oh, really? top five. How cool is that? So it's, and I, I'd, I'd put baby oil on and put shorts on and just say, really? hey, mom, take a photo of me, mom. I had to get a photo of my mom, take a photo for me, and then I'd send it in. And then I'd, I won, I won like five years later. Did and, you really? Yeah, and you, you get like protein powder, you get like a t-shirt. And it's, oh, that's you know, awesome. It's, it's cool. Cause, what age was that? That was, uh, that was going into middle school. So that was like fourth, fifth grade, yeah. So what what age is that? Uh, I was around like 12, 13. That's so young. Yeah, and kids start around 13. So young. I started lifting yeah. when I was 17, I th- and normal. that was pretty young. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like a normal slash young age. For yeah, someone. yeah. When you're like, okay, I'm done with school, like, whatever. Yeah, I'm mom's the last year of school, but you're exactly. getting into it from the beginning. Yeah, going to middle school. And you see that nowadays, too, because the like the social media, everyone's everything's out there to see. You see kids in like middle school now doing it all the time, but you would never fathom and think about that. You think you're mm. your kid skateboarding surfing those are the yeah that's that's all i did football. yeah you're not dieting at that 13 no no <laughs> no no not, probably not, not not purposely <laughs> no probably should you for the yeah. most part unless that unless you're extreme is key you know direction's key so gotcha I, but that's early age what was it like when you um when you won the first one online because it took you five years to win, yeah, did it? Yeah. That must have felt pretty good. It literally, it, it literally uh, I was like, did I, do they even like let people win? Like, how do you get? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I just, I just. Were you thinking you deserve to win yeah, sometimes? Yeah, I was like, I was like, maybe I'm opposing wrong, but yeah, I felt that uh, every every time I would do it, it just, uh, it wasn't my time. But the funny thing about it is, that I was still determined. Like, I, you know, some people at that age, you'll you're you're okay with trying and trying or do, watching the same thing over and over again. It's like, like you have kids, or your daughter might watch the same show. Over yeah. repeatedly and never get bored of it. That's how I was with, with that. I would, I would, my, my goal, like, I guess maybe like a, like a religion or a calling. I would every week. I got obsession. I can just say obsession. Yeah, and it, it a healthy like, obsession in yeah, a way. That too. You know, it, you have to actually put like what you take, like what, you, what creatine are you taking? Oh, you did you really? Workouts if you want to, to kind of make yourself look like hey, gotcha. I, I, I look at it and I know it too. So it was, it was a pretty cool experience overall. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, was your first competition on stage in the uh, in st- in the states? Not yeah. really quiet. Yeah, literally that. Because after after like middle school, I moved to uh, California. Okay. And then from that's when I kept bodybuilding. But my very first show ever was going to be in it was in Hawaii. Sorry, that was, it was in, in Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, that was my junior year of high school. Because they didn't, you know kids in bodybuilding like that's. For one, it's not quote unquote healthy if you're a bodybuilder, mm. especially then, back cup like yeah. twenty years ago, and, tw- yeah. more than twenty. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh no, what talking fifteen years or something, mm. right? Yeah, exactly. So I it wasn't it wasn't really a lot around mm. at gotcha. all. Gotcha. Yeah, in general, bodybuilding wasn't popular. It wasn't never learned for kids. Yeah, especially for kids like yeah. They even it was a rarity to have like teen bodybuilding contest for kids. Gotcha. But now it's now it's, now it's known like teen division. It's still known. Oh, it's, it's huge it's still, now. Yeah, yeah so, it's like, so much bigger it now. Makes, it makes money too. So. Gotcha. How, how was it like eating enough food, eating the right food, living at home, mm-hmm. having your parents there? Exactly. Because it, it's a very selfish thing, isn't it? Big time. Yeah. Like prepping, cooking. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. Yeah. How how was the family was feel about looking, that? Yeah. Looking back at it now, I'm like my my parents are doing all that for me. They're buying my supplements for me. They're helping me with my with my contest prep. Were they really? Yeah. And was, I was your mom cooking your food yeah, too? You know, oh, you're, that's awesome. You're a kid. You don't cook. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> you know? that's awesome. Yeah. See, mom's cooking you like uh, brown rice yeah, and yeah, chicken yeah. and yeah, the good stuff. Like, mom, not that. Want this? Yeah. It's like, and she was all for. I didn't think about it now. Like being. Oh, that's adult, awesome. Like, like you wouldn't do that. You have four other kids to take care of. You're making. Yeah, I was gonna say it's, you. Yeah. You weren't the only kid. Yeah, he's on this. He's on this particular diet. He needs more broccoli than the other. It's like. But that's crazy it's, it's, it's pretty cool so you got your parents to thank for a lot of that yeah that's, yeah and when you're young you don't realize that you figure that that's their job but yeah it's not, it's not. you really don't do you really don't appreciate how much your parents do for you mm-hmm. until you get older at all so it's like oh great but Especially if you hear other people who said they, they didn't get that it's like, oh, oh, yeah i think it's normal until you maybe realize yeah until you start to get older you meet more people you realize how lucky you did have it right mm-hmm. gotcha when um well, some of the struggles with actually competing like did you lose a lot did were you lucky you just kind of yeah. won straight away yeah, i was that guy that never won shows <laughs> you were that guy way yeah I, I don't say it's hard-headed but i like to do everything myself um my most people who i like it's funny too because going into teen bodybuilding like uh i have a lot of friends that i competed with as teenagers and here we yeah. are 15 years later we're still competing still competing still 
and we stay in touch. Um, oh, so you're still friends with the same guys? Yeah. Oh, a, that's awesome. Yeah, a handful of guys. Because most people, when, when you start at, a, at that early age, you burn out. Like, yeah. That's 15 years of bodybuilding. Just, just like any yeah, sport, really, yeah, that true. age. You know, yeah. You retire. Or Especially you know, something that extreme. Yeah. yeah. That too. You know, you kind of get over it. Especially if you haven't really accomplished your goal yet. Unless you have really like a diehard passion for it. It's a very rarity. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's the main thing with that is just... Um, it's it's a big difference when you when you bodybuild at, at a at a teenage level all the way to like a collegiate level which I did too all the way to like a national level and you turn pro it's like most people they they usually either burn out because it's not a healthy sport at all you do have issues with like with your overall health and, and like that and a lot of times when you're doing your own diet like I was I learned a lot of my, a lot of my mistakes a lot of my issues I I didn't do well with actually doing well in placing was because I did my own diet where I had people who I trained with now like back in 15 years ago who had their coach I had, because you know it costs gotcha. money for coach. my mom bought me a coach because they were, were still kids well we know now when you compete you want to do uh, a photo you know photo shoot you want to get married do do wedding photos you hire a coach you hire a nutritionist or you hire someone to help you out as a kid, it's like I don't have a job. I don't, you know. Yeah. Like, so you used to find your parents. Was it that. was it being hard headed or was it financial? Or was it a bit of both? It's probably a bit of both because you gotcha. have people probably can relate. You know, if you're working out, like, oh man, you're so buff. You should do a show. I'm like, I look good enough. Yeah, you look great. You can do a show. So like, I don't need help at all. I, I look great already. I don't need okay. help to do a show. And then it's also uh, we'll say like being ignorant or just being maybe a kid and not realizing hey, when it comes to bodybuilding, like, and I guess the keyword too is guidance. You might have someone who's like a, maybe an older brother or like a dad who actually competes or knows what to do for yeah. you, or you have someone who doesn't, and, and then so you kind of just learn yourself, and you know. So I guess the main things too is direction. Like I having, I, I didn't really have direction regarding how important it is to actually have a team to actually do things for you the right way, so you can do it safely and look look the best. Gotcha. And so I okay. was more so being my own coach and my own trainer. And, over the years, I, I learned how to do it, obviously, but it just uh, it took, took a lot of losing. <laughs> and you didn't, the thing is, you didn't have online like you do now That's with true. information to at all. Yeah. Absolutely everything yeah. you possibly could find. Precisely. So much different now, yeah. isn't it? It's, do you feel like if you're doing this now, it'd be like, you'd be a lot further? Yeah, I, I believe that like tenfold. Because yeah. every bit of information yeah. you could yeah. possibly need it's is like, yeah. accessible. More, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, someone coming up, someone getting into bodybuilding, you would recommend getting a posing coach, a nutritionist, right. so maybe even a personal trainer. Yeah. or someone yeah. to teach in the yeah, gym. a mentor that you can talk to that can give you the right directions. You gotcha. can't afford to do that. And most people who start in their team, they don't have the luxury to be able to invest in that. And people even our age don't have the luxury. So I would say maybe a mentor that you can know and you can trust to kind of give you the How right do you find direction. that? How do you find a mentor, yeah. you think? I think, like, for me, I found my, my first mentor in the gym. You know, someone who you can go up to and you talk to about... You get, like, there's always that one guy in the gym that, at least for a guy's perspective, I could say maybe women maybe can't relate or have the same you know um, experience but usually there's someone in the gym who you, who you maybe like thrive to be like or look like yeah and you ask them hey man what are you doing for you what are you doing to get those how to get those arms how to get those legs and then you kind of hey can you help me out and can you work out together and if you get that opportunity to have that then that can that's someone who can kind of coach you slash mentor you in the sport you know that's 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 uh, i was lucky to have that and a lot of times now nowadays it's like an online coach and then yeah you have to kind of trust that person at the same time too and not being so, scared to actually ask that's the because worst case now they say no yeah oh hey that's sorry i'm too busy exactly. or hey, hey i can't do it but i might have a friend who can help you yeah. out yeah if uh, you don't ask yeah you're not getting any further yeah. here's my rates you know yeah yeah well here's my rates yeah. and that's nothing wrong with that either yeah, at all. At all. what's um losing what was some of the biggest lessons you learned by losing mm -hmm. and how did you stay motivated right that's the thing about it yeah it was it's losing was actually more so having more it kind of fired me up to, to continue to it did motivate work, you more work, yeah work, work, okay work, which is the opposite usually when you continue to lose multiple shows because i would and it wasn't last place I, I would i would lose but i'd be like so close to getting top two or so close to getting first place or so close to getting overall Wait, really so it's like oh man it's that much closer that much closer so it's you know when, it, when it's like that it's like okay i got dead last then i got dead last then I got dead yeah last. yeah it's like oh man I, my, like my first show i got top two out of the whole entire state Gotcha. I was like, oh man, okay. So that kept you, mo yeah. so you're right on the, the right yeah. on the edge. That too. And I, got, I did it myself too. Okay, and try again. Top two again. Okay. Well, try again. Top two. Gotcha. Again. So that is like, it's, it's bound to happen. It's, it's, so I, I think that's what kind of motivated me to keep on working hard. But I was like, hey, what do I need to get the extra percentage to do better? That didn't really click in. You know, these guys who are winning have posing coaches or they have nutritionists or they have someone actually. When did you realize that? Yeah. It wasn't until like uh, being an adult, which is why people say, "Hey, man, you should do it when you're an adult because you're more mature." I'm like, "Like, yeah, that's true, but 
with like early twenties, you're like, "Hey, all these people beating me have." Yeah. Is that when the realization that's the thing happened? About, and that's funny too, because people who I talk to about they kind of they kind of say the same thing regarding like, "Hey, I didn't really acknowledge this stuff or, or do these things until I got older." And yeah, it, it requires a lot of maturity when it comes to your body and eating healthy. Eating healthy in general, people still think that they can do things themselves. But if you don't really know, why not talk to someone who actually knows and that you can actually get the knowledge from, or maybe, maybe just pick off you know different knowledge from different people that you might talk to, or maybe read books. Now it's like you have podcasts; you can read books now. You can you can talk to people in the gym now. But it's just why not? If you have free free resources, why not? You know, mm. exhaust them if you can. That's that's what I want. Gotcha. Yeah. When did you win your first competition? Uh, I was actually, and yeah, because I was on a top two streak for a while. In Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. When did you um, actually like? Yeah, I moved to Vegas. I was on moved to Vegas. And I had my mentor, and we moved. To, we actually did a show in California, the West Coast Classic, and I won my first show. And I put me in a back. I was uh twenty three. Yeah, when you when you yeah. So from the age of twelve, to yeah. it took you eleven years <laughs> of grinding. Exactly. Also and like a good serious ten years before you actually right. won something. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it's. So you, you you were committed. Let you know, like I was not ready to lose. <laughs> gotcha. And how was that for you? Was that how did that feel? That was that was actually felt better than losing. Put it that way. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I was motivated by losing, I was definitely really motivated by actually winning now, because then you get the you get to say, oh, I, I won this competition, and uh, it's it's good for your self esteem. It's good for helping people out. And it, it, you know, you're in the magazines. You can say I was in a magazine, and look at look at this, you know, it's like. All those things are just really cool, and especially all those years of like getting top two, getting top three, getting top, and then you actually win. It's like, man, you're eventually going to win, and then boom, there you go. Gotcha. But you know how like you know the quote unquote hard work pays off. Is like yeah, <laughs> and you probably appreciate it a lot more by by not waiting for so long, and then suddenly, I feel like if something comes easy or you get it first time, you don't Precisely. appreciate it as much. Precisely. Yeah, I, I definitely see that a lot, and that's and that's one thing too. Like we both probably can teach our kids the same thing. Like they, a lot of kids now, they always want to win. And mm. then if they actually you know how to lose humbly or know how to, know how to actually lose gracefully or know how to lose in general, when they actually win, they'll actually be able to yeah, appreciate it even more. Cause they yeah, to and losing is only losing. It's only temporary, right? Like yeah. you just get up and keep pushing and keep pushing, and mm -hmm. and that's what happens. Yeah. It's a learning experience. Uh, you mentioned bodybuilding not being so healthy. What what do you think is unhealthy about, say, bodybuilding? Yeah, I think just black and white. People think when it comes to diet, uh, bodybuilding, you have to suffer. And overtrain and undereat and miss sleep and stress and freak out. So it's 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 very taxing on the body. Just just me knowing over the years of how the body works regarding what, what's required for us to be healthy you know, based off our hormones and whatnot. But just just black and white, generally speaking, when you're actually putting your body through a lot of stress to actually lose X amount of body fat, um, to maintain X amount of muscle, you know, to actually do X amount of cardio, like and you and you still have actual regular job regular nine to five or yeah it's it's very taxing in a, in, a, in a sense of just um just overall health like it's just it's taxing on the hormones i guess a better way to put it it's just taxing on it's, it's very stressful and we yeah know, we know what stress leads to high high stress can increase high cortisol high cortisol can increase a lot more other things that can involve our health but it's just it's it's not healthy in general a lot of people say like a yo-yo like yo -yo diet how you go you know you yeah up and, and down you go, yeah and, you and i say black and white because there's ways to actually do it to where you're healthy with the sport you know, we won't talk. We won't necessarily talk about PEDs unless you want to, but that's a whole another. That's, that's another thing too. People say, "Oh, when you bodybuild, you're on these t type types of PED slash drugs." Yeah. And so that you know, or, or water pills, you know, or Lasix. So um, I just think in general, like most people will diet really hard, so they really put their body through a lot of stress, and that's not really healthy in a sense of going up and down in weight. Okay. Train that hard, but if you know actually what you're doing, having a coach, then you can do it. You can do it to where you're actually healthy while you're doing, it. and that's one thing too, like having. Having a team that is in your best interest when you're doing it at that at, at you know for that long of a time, um, you can do it healthy. You do you think? Know. Do you think you can be healthy as a bodybuilder, or you think you can just be healthy as a doing a bodybuilding type lifestyle? Yeah, that's that's what I do now. I, regarding what I coach and what I recommend, and what I yeah recommend is more of a bodybuilding lifestyle because, mm. like I said, the whole yo-yo and going up and down in weight in general, whether you are just going from fat to skinny it's not healthy it's a lot of stress you're putting on your yep. body from having all that weight on you and then and going all the way down and weight down to like two three percent body fat and then back so, yeah. it's so can, can you do bodybuilding healthy like actually bodybuilding I, I think you can it's just more so um actually knowing how to do it healthy knowing how to do it okay uh, approach. a lot of us like to just um see someone in the gym you know curling and we just curl like like what we see opposed to actually knowing how to actually curl you know you know aligning the spine you know shoulders going back you know going down slowly going up you know actually knowing how to curl same with with the whole dieting it's like knowing how to eat you don't have to do chicken and broccoli 
you can still do a variety of foods you need for nutrients yep. wise. We both know like spinach, kale, arugula, broccoli. We can still do, you know, fruits still in your diet still. You can still do steak. You can it's like just knowing that you can do these things is the main thing people don't really know. They they follow, okay, well, even old school Arnold. Oh, Arnold, he used to do just just whole eggs, and I drink them. I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but is that what you you know? Is that the healthy approach? Like, do you yeah. do you care? Like, people, most people like go hard or go home or get bigger diet trying. And that's I think that's kind of it's like bodybuilding extreme seem yeah. to go together, don't they? That's and you have people who actually are we'll say reinventing the wheel to where they're actually doing it on a, on a healthy terms and they're yeah. looking just as they're looking just as good without going the hardcore route and they're looking better after the sport too aftermath is a is there a professional in mind you can think of who's mm -hmm. kind of leading the way right now with that well you know there's there's people um like for instance I, I would say like people who have gone hardcore to actually more of like a you know i don't say leisure but a, a, a smarter approach to where they're making longevity i'll say dorian yates well that's that's what i was going to yeah, say that's that's probably, first thing came to my mind yeah, definitely you know um there's there's because he still looks good he's still functioning well he still moves he's not ronnie coleman in yeah yeah, yeah. He and he was, was just as big right he was yeah he yeah was, he was not human either yeah he's not yeah he's hardcore to the max so he's a good example of what you're talking about he's, he's one yeah there's many other ones too as okay well, you know? i mean if you guys know ben Pol ben Polkowski, ben Pikulski, i talked to you about him for a little bit there. Mm. he's based out of florida but ben Pikulski, uh he canadian bodybuilder he was hardcore extreme and I think a light bulb just maybe went off to where he felt he can probably do things you know uh healthier and i'm doing this sport but after the sport, how am I going to feel? How am I going to look? Yeah. How am I going to respond to day-to-day -day activities when I have my kids and my wife and my family? So he thought more longevity. He turned the science approach on and put more science in this, into the sport. And now he actually doesn't compete anymore, but he actually teaches athletes who want to bodybuild the scientific approach. Things that people wish okay. he and knew when before. he was younger. Yeah. He looks great still. You know, one of those guys that look superhuman to looking like a regular guy now, but looks great still. But still looks great. Still yeah. Looks great. yeah, you can tell he works out still. I want to touch on that because, like, I, I was obsessed. I was obsessed for the longest time, and I know you definitely were. And I know we're both fathers now. Like, I'm 42. Like, you're a bit behind me, but your priorities change, right? Right. And if you if you do if you take serious measures when you're young, and you do serious things you jeopardize yourself long term. Mm. And as you get older, you realize that, wow, you shouldn't really do that, right? Exactly. It's like people are going and party, take a lot of drugs, or people will go the bodybuilding route. Exactly. The reality is being a father, having kids, um, is so much more important than mm. having a beach body when you're 22, <laughs> isn't it? Exactly. If it ha what, what do you kind of tell the 20-year-old the kids out there right now trying to, yeah. trying to look like yeah. that? Um, I yeah, I would say just maybe put our think about ourselves back during that age and someone our age telling telling us that would be and, and that's what i'm getting yeah, at right you know? so it's like it's some of us if it's someone that we actually look up to or maybe like can kind of maybe if it, if it gets across the right way if it comes across the right way to it sinks in like, mm, then maybe but usually people in the in that age like that 18 to 22 range or i think most people are usually like this just grind mode to where they're like this is what i want to do and this is what i'm going to do and this is what i'm going to do they don't think about the aftermath because they're at the age to where they feel they're in, you know, unstoppable, still, yeah. indestructible still. Uns yeah, indestructible, yeah. So, but there's some people, maybe that person, I think, I think, I think kids nowadays, like even kids our age, um, they're going to have a different mentality because there's so much things that are exposed out there in the yeah, world. Yeah, true. It's a lot more public you know, now, isn't it? A lot it? of things that happen. They, I was 22, but look at me now. They can see that. Oh, crap. Well, let me mm. maybe slow my roll a little bit. But just general, generally, um, most of us are going to like learn the hard way. I know I, I learned the hard way. Um, and at the age, and now I'm at the age where I'm like, okay, think about, think, like, maybe take a step or two, you know, ahead before you make that decision. See what, the, what will happen if you, you know, think about the aftermath, possibly, if you yeah. make a certain decision. Because priority to you right now is your son. No, it is, yeah, definitely. And, and uh, that's all that matters. Mm, that's first. That's the only thing that matters. First if you're a 120-pound dude for the rest of your life, <laughs> but your son's healthy, yeah. that's all that matters. That's your job now. Yeah. So, yeah, I just want to make sure people realize that it's more than just looking good, finding girls, whatever, whatever it is. Um, you want a long, fulfilled, healthy life. Think about that. Um, I want to touch on why is everybody on overweight? Mm -hmm. Why are we all unhealthy? And mm -hmm. what can we do about it? Yeah. Most people will say, hey, I was skinny before COVID. I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> like COVID hasn't been going on for that long now. I'm joking. But um, yeah, the main thing with, with, with a lot of it is just more so lifestyle. And that, that leads back to our very first combo we started with, with this talk is like what we're taught when we're kids and a lot of times too gotcha the environment know, oh i used to be your size i used to be like you when i was your age like 
we both know the environment. We're, if, we, if we were actually brought up in a healthy environment, so all the kids know it's grass fed, grass finished, and organic, and you know, and, and farm raised, and they don't know processed, saturated fats. They don't know yeah. skittles. They don't know. T- you know, they don't. They don't know that at all because their entire life. And that's a percentage of people. A very small percentage, especially nowadays too. Like a lot of families, they're you know they're working. They have to work you know at least two jobs to take care of their family yeah. because things are going up, especially here in Vegas, this, in this country in general. So. A lot of times with kids in general, like it's 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 going to be that foundational. If they have a good foundation uh, regarding eating healthy, that's going to really correlate as they get older and continue. Gotcha. That. But that's not the case nowadays. So a lot of times, people go off what they see on on TV, on social media. You know, uh, most important, a meal of the day, <laughs> breakfast. Yeah, yeah. What are eating. Yeah. You know, frosted flakes. And, Falling into marketing, right? Exactly. And it's and it's pushed on you from the moment you're born your entire life. Exactly. And it's like power bars and mm. having snacks between yeah. meals mm. and breakfast is the most yeah. important meal of the day. Milk's good for you. Yeah. And who's behind it? Someone in shape. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, like, it's it's like, it's it's just money to be made. Yeah, it's like so it's like and that's not you know, it's not anyone's fault regarding, Oh, I didn't know that. And people still don't know that. It's like it's that's the beauty of marketing. It's designed to have you think that exact way. Mm. Go buy Tony Tiger Fox fix that he looks great. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like you, you gotta have that. It's like, and, I, and I'm like, yeah. I do like Frosty Flakes. Yeah, it's like, you, you, <laughs> in moderation. You, yeah, you look at the commercial, it's like, there's an orange there, there's orange juice, and there's, it's like carbs. Gotcha. Carb, 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 carb. And look at Tony though, look at the kids, they're not out of shape, they're all, they're all fit. So, so how, if you weren't born, have you, if you weren't grown up in the right environment, and how, how do you start to change that? Is it identifying that hey, I am I am unhealthy, or something is going to happen down the track? Like, wh- where do you start? Where does the average American start on changing their life? Right. Yeah, a lot of us just on average, a lot of us start just because we have like experience in life to where it affects us in like a negative way, which but, is the extreme measure, and that's what we should hundred percent avoid. Yeah, but how do we how do we how do we avoid getting to that part? Yeah, you don't want to have yeah. diabetes. You don't want to have a mild heart attack before you start to take yeah. action. Yeah. So how, well, how do you go? How do you step back yeah, and? Yeah, and I've been to I've been into the nutrition industry. Like I, I got my cert to be a trainer um, in high school, my senior year. So okay. I've, I've trained people my whole entire adult life, you know, from like eighteen up. So I've I've seen people who, especially being in like a military, you know, um, environment. A lot of times, husbands deploy overseas, wives, you know, what are they going to do? They they eat because <laughs> their gotcha. husband's just gone. Yeah. So they, I, I've trained a lot of, a lot of uh, spouses. Oh, you have? Um, okay. So asking them questions and seeing why they're the way they are. A lot a lot of it is lifestyle, but a lot of times it's direction. A lot of us feel that we can do it ourselves. I'm going to speak from, from a male's perspective. Cause I know us being males, I can I can relate somewhat with women, but women are going to know their you know, their bodies and their best. But a lot of times men um, and then women I've worked with, a lot of times it's just more so direction. You know, I can do it myself. I saw a Jenny Craig commercial. These girls, like me, I can go on the Jenny Craig diet and follow this and do that. A lot of times it's just, it's just more so having the right direction based off what you need. It's It's got to okay. be a customized thing based off your lifestyle. You see a video for someone losing weight that looks like you, but they don't. You don't put it. Keep in mind what they're actually doing compared to what you're doing. If you you s- have, sorry, ahead. I mean, you say you're saying like what job you do, how many kids you have, That's the cool. hours you're working. Exactly got your responsibilities yeah. and to fit what, to yeah. you specifically and that's the most important thing. gotcha and, and we know women spend the majority of their life dieting guys will try something and then they'll get over it you know okay. so it's 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 and, and with, when you hear that it's like oh that's interesting because a lot of times guys they can get in shape they don't have the same issues and same um, same needs that women might need as well which is why i can relate better with guys but just to circle back around to what, to what i was saying a lot of times uh men in general we're, we're stubborn we feel we can do it ourselves, and yeah. this is what I saw in the magazine, and this is what I was doing when I was younger. When I was younger, this worked for me. So ten years later, I can do it still, but it's not working. But you feel you can do it, so you keep on trying and trying. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting what you got. And here you are, heart attack and stroke. Oh crap! Okay, help me out, gotcha. Help me out, Brendan. It's like okay, so it's like. So you're that's saying, what I mean by stubborn. I mean like this. So you're saying stop and realize that you need help and then finding the right help too yeah. what, what is the right help is that a nutritionist is that a personal yeah. trainer it, is what right. like it, it is if which you, way do you go yeah to, to be like to be, to be quite frank with you I, I would say it is actually going to seeking professional help so the local guy in the gym that looks like looks like uh, your idol isn't local help <laughs> uh, professional help either sorry um so it would be going to seeing a doctor, you know, first and foremost, getting labs done on a serious note. That's your base. Um, so that's where you think you should start. You, but a lot of people, it's, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle change. That's the main thing about it. If, like I said before, 
not jump back to the kid, but just to say when you're young, it's a lifestyle. That's all you know. That's all you know. So you're having to go from your, as an adult, not, not ever having a diet lifestyle to turn on that switch. And you might not know how to do it because you've never done it before. So yeah. which is why I always say you have to invest in actually people who actually know how to give you the right uh, structure and direction. So yeah, I think first and foremost would be if you get a trainer, have someone in that industry or that field that can do your labs for you because you want to see what's going on internally. We don't know that you running you running two hundred, uh, we'll say two miles a week, and you actually eating twelve hundred calories a day, and you're not losing any weight at all. You know, is it because you're not working hard, or you're not dieting enough, or is it because your hormones are out of whack? It's because you're okay. Not, you know, so, so you want to get to the base. It's base. very discouraging. People who gotcha. I mean, people can probably relate. You know, I, I bust my bust my ass in the gym all the time, and I eat all I have is broccoli and chicken. That's all I eat for months on end, and I still can't lose weight until yeah. I get over it and I get frustrated. It's like you know, a lot of things are going to be going on internally. We don't know about as we get older. Our hormones are going to decline. And it's the quote-unquote key word is anti-aging. You know, we want to kind of pr- uh, promote anti-aging. And much as we can, people say all the time, when I was younger, I used to be able to do that. Yeah, because you were younger. Yeah. So we can do, we can figure out what's going on now to adjust what we need to eat to get that weight gotcha. loss. And women have a lot more issues. We know that, too, because they are were they were made to, to make babies. So yeah. they weren't made to, to have six-packs and apps. And they may, they may want that. So it's like... They really need to actually make sure they have the right approach because it can be very frustrating. There's, women, there's a reason why women usually spend their entire life dieting because they they can't figure out what needs to go on a lot of times. And it's more so, it's a lot, a lot of us internally, you have to get labs done and see what's going on. It's not necessarily just the proper diet and proper um, training. Okay, regimen. so just, you went to the core. Yeah. I, nothing against doctors, though, but a lot of doctors aren't specimen, health specimens either. Yeah. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you get around that? At all, yeah. I mean, they can take your blood work all day long, but I wouldn't go to a broke financial plan. I wouldn't go to a fat personal trainer. Exactly. So what's what's your yeah. thoughts on that? I mean, that's another, like, roadblock. Because you'll, mm. like, okay, Cordell, I went to a doctor, and he said I was fine. I was like, but how do you look? He looked horrible. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not dissing on doctors yeah, at all. Not, it's, at all. So. it's just most people, are, like, majority of us are unhealthy no matter what you do. Yeah. That's the thing too. There's a, it's not easy to to get in shape, and it's not easy to find the right approach. But it's not, is it? And there's so much marketing and and persuasion yeah. and confusion, yeah. and that's what makes. How do you, how do you kind of get through that crap? That's the thing about it. And people it's, see people that mostly people see that when you see like marketing or people on social media, a lot of them have actually looked that way their entire lives. Yeah. So they've always been in shape. They've always been an active lifestyle. So now they're teaching people who are really more believe obese are out of shape their entire life to hey do this follow my regimen this is what you're in shape like and really it doesn't they get frustrated they, they follow someone's someone's protocol there's someone actually on social media that's actually being sued not speculating on that at all but that's just an example of, of someone who actually you know who actually looks apart their entire life and they're they're preaching and coaching and doing these things to help people who have no type of you know similarity in, in structure or lifestyle or shape to do what they're doing to get in shape. Yeah, so and it doesn't make sense. That's goes back to it's your not direction. maintainable. That goes back to your, your point of like how do you find the right approach for you and Gotcha. I, I said doctors, but then you you know it's like some doctors say, Hey, you're fine or some doctors won't really give the right approach. It's it's, it's a lot of loopholes you have to hop over and go through. But it's it's taking some type of action towards that. It's it's more so your attitude too. It's like, you know, if you're determined to get in shape, you're determined to get in shape and you have to just keep on trying and it, it sucks when you get to the point to where, you know, you wait till you're, you know, more Leo beast or you had a stroke or you had a heart attack that usually that's usually the, the that's usually the time where you're really just all in you know if i don't figure this out then i'm, I'm gonna, gonna die really yeah and you literally go i think the top three kills in the country are all diet related right mm, yeah, which is heart, heart disease, disease diabetes and mm. um, a lot of cancers, cancers yeah, from diet probably it, from yeah. diet yeah they are from diet it's crazy yeah. um so a doctor blood work and your next step would you go nutritionist would you go a personal trainer yeah, it's obviously like the gym I go to. My personal trainers, I wouldn't be paying money because they look yeah. like they just started training themselves. Yeah. That's so right. that's it's, that kind of bugs me too. That's the thing you have. So even in the fitness industry, you're 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 working people in that industry. They still may not have your best interest, or maybe have the knowledge that they need personally to help you out. So it's it's a lot of different things you might have to go through because everyone's not going to have the same approach. Everyone's not going to have the same needs, but. Generally speaking, it's, it's not going to be the typical trainer that you hire. Then they have you do squats, and they have you bench press, they have you curl, and then they recommend that a sample of diet, and you follow that. That's that's that generally might be discouraging because they may give you the total wrong direction. I think, in general, the key word would be dietitian or nutritionist. 
you know, and then and then he or she should be able to give you the labs, um, opposed to going through through a GP, you know, okay. practitioner. That might be a, a area to avoid. Most people, and that's it, it's enforcing that to some of the polls because when you tie in a nutritionist or dietitian, that's going to be more so usually out of pocket. Yeah, your doctor's not necessarily always going to say you you need to see one. Maybe if you're like morbidly obese or to the point where you might not be around too much. But a lot of people want to avoid getting to that point. Yeah, yeah. Like, I get, I get to that point for my insurance to cover, you know, my diet. Yeah. It's like, that's kind of why. Like, it's in, yeah. So that's usually the case. It's like, if you're, if you're overweight, but you're not to where it's like, hey, you might croak in any second now. Your insurance isn't necessarily going to take care of you then, or, or you won't have that extra help. It's always when you actually have a, have a big issue, then you get taken care of. And most people want to avoid getting that far. And it's like seeking the right advice. Who do I trust? Who do I go? And a lot of times people will just think it's this one thing. It's, it's never just a one, you know, one step approach. It's never just getting a trainer or getting a dietitian. It's usually like a lifestyle change to where you have to have a team usually. And that's, yeah. that's costly also, that's time consuming. And that's the thing too, it's a lifestyle change. If your lifestyle is taking care of kids, which is most important for most parents, of course, and then taking and then going to work as well, which is involves your kids too and taking care of your family. Like where do you have time and find time? It's, yeah. You have to really kind of, you have to really yeah to you got to make it a priority um, i want to touch on your your environment and people you hang around with it's got a right. huge impact on the way you look and how healthy you are right, right. Mm -hmm. what, what's your thoughts on that that's that's one thing too people have had a lot of issues with regarding who they're around as well and it can be family too you know people it absolutely can be family and certain i feel like certain type of nationalities have certain type of like they tend to eat more and more focused around food which is amazing yeah. and i'm all for it exactly. but it doesn't necessarily make it the, the healthiest yeah. either yeah. and people are waking up they're, they're seeing their friends and family who they love being around because there's friends in their family and their eating habits and their drinking habits and their lifestyle habits and it's like oh man well you look i look at like man there's there's always that maybe that one or two people who have the family who actually do work out and keep access to their lifestyle and they and they look opposite of everyone else yeah but it's like, how do you kind of break away from that mold and how, mm. how do you change that? And it's, it's more so, the key word I would say is, is more so going out of your comfort zone. A lot of us, a lot of us, you know, we get to a certain age or we get, we reach a certain way, a lifestyle. My mom's out of shape. My dad's out of shape. My brother's out of shape. I'm out of shape. Like, that's. Oh, my, my wife for 20 years, we're both out of shape and we're comfortable. Yeah. That's and it doesn't make you healthy. And, and I feel like that's a tricky one, too. What makes you step up and become healthy mm. if she's not willing to or he's not willing yeah. to? And then that also can lead to other, like, insecurities yeah. and issues. Yeah. Yeah. issues. issues, yeah. That's, that's the thing, too. And a lot, a lot of times you see that mm. where, you know, you might see the, the wife get real get. I've, I've experienced it myself regarding people I've trained where the wife has got gotten in, in better shape because she was having health issues. And maybe your husband didn't actually, you know, care about that. He wondered, he said, you're, you're fine the way you are. You know, yeah. you're fine. And once again, health issues are at risk. And she got in shape, and he's out of shape now. So insecurities probably you know really yeah annoying. or even just that anchor holding you back it, it's it's too, you know? it's gonna weigh on you eventually right yeah. i'm going to the gym uh can we do you want to just watch a movie yeah. i'm going to the gym do you want to go get your fast food exactly so gotcha yeah, so that, that, that's a really good question that you mentioned like how do you actually people who when they gain weight like how to keep it off like how does it happen like there's not it's there's so many variables on top of the pandemic going on right now that's causing us to gain weight and have health issues which is going to lead to you know more issues but there's not really a lot that we can use to encourage us and direct us the exact way to actually get in shape. It's still yeah. In the air, right? I feel like that's the hardest thing. Is it is so damn confusing. Mm -hmm. It's not confusing for myself or you because right. we've done our entire life. Right. But if you're just coming into it at my age or your age or even at twenty, it's so confusing. It's like who do you trust? It's who do you trust? Who do you listen to? What? guys real what yeah. uh, fasting keto i heard keto sucks ke I heard yeah fast oh uh, you should you can't fast it's unhealthy like You'll hear it all the time. It, it's it's nuts but something needs to change because it's the number one thing in the world it's just dragging the world down Precisely. so god yeah, uh i would say it's not encouraged People, they, it, weight loss is it's encouraged but i think that it's not encouraged it's it's does it really there's it's it's like a 50 50 i, I feel with mm. you'll you'll see fitness encouraged but then you also see it right on the other side you'll see it you'll see people encouraging alcohol and and they'll try and tie in fitness and and and, and wine or fitness and things that are healthy you know like they'll it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of mis it's a lot of mis misleading guidance at the same time too it's also a lot of misdirection but it's it's very confusing as well the whole we yeah. both know like 
when you see things that say sugar free or things that say gluten free, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother issue, yeah, right? It's, it's like it's is the labeling and the confusion with that. Right. I get confused, right. and I know what I'm doing for yeah. the most part, <laughs> and I'm still get confused. Right. And I was like, oh, this is, and I was like, it's 26 grams of sugar in this thing. It's, it's nuts. Yeah, it's gluten free though. So, yeah, you know. yeah, it's. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I want to talk to you about how important is nutrition over exercise? Right. I, I believe it is night and day difference. Right. What's your thoughts yeah. on that? I think it's your, it's your base. Your foundation is going to be what you're putting into your body. I, I have it on paper. I have it in writing. I have it documented. I, I've had people who, were, who became diabetics, and they ran marathons. Some of them were triathletes. Oh, really? And all diabetics? These are legit. Like, gotcha. Were they overweight or they? No. Just their diet. They yeah. just not healthy. Just their diet. Their 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 cholesterol. You know their their cholesterol. Their their hormones. What they're eating. Yeah. You can't. Oh, I'm just gonna. I had a cheeseburger. I'm just gonna do some more cardio. Burn it off. That's. That's okay. But when it comes it's to what's inside, right? And unfortunately, yeah. that's another thing. Like, what the heck, man? I can't just work out and eat what I want. I'm like, nah, you you can't. You gotta. It's it's gotta yeah. find a balance. You know, maybe go to your doctor. They can put you on some statin drugs to keep the cholesterol at bay. But you shouldn't have to rely on that, right? And then you should who knows do it naturally. That's gonna counteract yeah, it. it's like it's lifestyle is everything. But yeah, I, I've had athletes that were super athletes, triathletes, and they they literally became diabetics while they were still. That's with that insane. Lifestyle. But I, I know exactly and what you're talking their, about. Was their diet still? It's it's still like you like you said. I agree. It's that, that's your foundation. And that's crazy. And it doesn't mean hardcore strict diet. It just means knowing what to eat based off your lifestyle, based off mm. your goal. I want to be a triathlete. What do I eat? This is what you eat. I was like, what do I eat? They're just knowing what to eat. And most people figure, they still figure, I, I run 30 miles a day. And that's what people do. It sounds wild, but um, it's all I eat what I want. Like, that still might be the issue. Yeah. So it's, to me, personally, I believe, like, 95% is diet. You should eat well enough so you don't have to train. Training should be a bonus, in right. my opinion. Right. Um, and then I feel like there's a lot of, a lot of misconception that you need to go to the gym. I don't think you need to go to the gym. I think you need to be active, and I think you need to do what you enjoy. I agree. Yeah. If you like playing tennis, go play as much tennis as you want, mm -hmm. but make sure that you're eating right. Yeah. And um, would you agree on that? Yeah, I think if you have physique goals, like, well, yeah, if you if you start. obviously, but that could be done through calisthenics. Yes. That could be done with chin ups at the park. That could, doesn't necessarily even yeah. have to be at the gym. Pumping iron, you gotta do that. That training. could be parkour. That could yeah. be so many other forms yeah. of of yeah. training, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It things for your doors yeah. inside. Exactly. You don't necessarily have to go to the gym, but you do need to be active. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to touch on. I just lost it. So, like eating right is everything. I yeah. So I'm. I've got. I think mesomorph type of body where I can get bigger, but I can also put body fat right. on quite easily. Right. I'm, you're, I'm sure you're probably the same. Right. And I feel like that to blessing and a curse in the same way because at my age, unless I stay in my diet, I get fat. Right. But by getting fat it makes me realize that, hey, you're probably not very healthy right now. Right. Whereas you got these other people in the 40s, 50s, 60s, they're built like race hounds, they still got abs, mm. but they don't know what's going on the inside because they got no real reflection on how unhealthy. Unfortunately. And that goes back to the marathon the thing, case. doesn't it? Yeah, that's, that's the case with that being said, yeah. It's and a lot of people are, are finding out that how, in, how important it actually is to what you're actually eating and knowing what knowing the whole annual labs. And a lot of times, too, like if you want to talk from an athlete standpoint, a lot of the labs that, that, that are covered and done these days, they're like 20, 30 years old. And a lot of a lot of things need to be updated regarding labs because people are having more underlying issues that could be prevented. You know, if they have, okay. so they're making different kind of labs. But this what I'm what I'm talking about is just uh, um, once again, going out of your comfort zone and doing more, but for your health and for your longevity. Um, seeing a you know seeing a seeing a GP you know to get your annual physical and labs and that that's that's fine but um, take an extra step to actually talk to a nutritionist or a dietitian someone who actually um, from like an athletic standpoint a sports someone who actually specializes in people who actually are athletes to make sure you're doing everything you need to do for your health and for your goal um, is something that you actually need to do because a lot of times if you're doing just the general you will probably get the general results there's a lot of things that could be underlying that other uh, areas of ex expertise will say that can help you out. Now, a lot of times people will will diet and diet and diet, and they'll look a, they'll look a certain way and they'll maintain that look, but they don't know what they're doing internally until yeah. it's too late. And a lot of a lot of a lot of signs may not maybe underline that maybe certain experts might see, but they're not seeking that that advice. Gotcha. So they're doing the, the that very general. First thing that comes to mind is like polyps on like colon cancer, right? right? 
because you're not eating enough fiber, you're not clear enough, like, I guess, feces yeah. through your body, exactly. you develop polyps, which turns cancerous, yeah. which can turn, like, yeah. lethal very yeah. quickly. And doctors see that when it's already there. Yeah, and but that's something you can see very quickly, yeah. can't you, by but, getting tested. But being, things that are, like, kind of, like, in the process of, of being formed or, or habits that are going to possibly create those things, that's where you kind of have the extra step of someone watching over what you're eating and doing to help you out to prevent those things. Diabetes being one of the main ones, right? Exactly, yeah. Diabetes being something you can pick blood up sugar, on very yeah. quick. Yeah, blood yeah. sugar is something you pick yeah. up on so very quickly. It, it, it requires extra time out of your day and more lifestyle, but it's like, you know, it, it might save your life. <laughs> what, uh, in your opinion, what age do you really think you should get on top of getting checked? Yeah. I, I really base off the diet, off, off the lifestyle, you know, at, at this. So if you're unhealthy at 25. Yeah, right? yeah, unfortunately. Like, I have people who I've worked with who have low T at 25. And okay. The, the male people are going into andropause, which is like the yeah, menopause, andropause. They're, they're having issues with low testosterone in their, in their early 20s, opposed to, like, late 30s, early 40s. Gotcha. So, which is, that, should be unheard of, right? Well, you know, um, a lot of times it's, it's a diet. A lot of us think we're eating healthy, but really we're actually doing our body a disservice, opposed to actual service. So I, I would literally say that once you're an adult. Um, but if it's it's really based off lifestyle, but I would say in general, like why not start in your twenties? Okay. You know, it's 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 and a, just it's make a that a habit, mm-hmm. like a gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What uh what is the best diet? Yeah. Is the best yeah. diet that that what works for you? I, I want to be corny and say yes, but <laughs> at the same time too, I I, I like to kind of add on to that and say the best diet is is what your body needs. And how do you know that? You can't, you know, that's when you actually seek, you know, an actual actual expert. I don't want to say dietitian or nutritionist because there's people who actually do have a general idea of, of, of working with athletes and clients for decades that know what's going on. A lot of people actually, you know, intern under, long story short, like it's the diet itself shouldn't really be a diet. It's more so what you're putting in. People, when people say, oh, this is my diet, they make weight loss. Diet more so is, is more so lifestyle, what you're putting into your daily regimen of, of eating, what yeah. you're eating normally. So the best diet or the best actual lifestyle is, is something that you can actually do and maintain. Because so, I hear diet, I hear, I hear temporary. Don't you? You don't, you don't think long term when you think yeah, diet, like, do you? Yeah, I'm on a diet, I'm like, ah. A six-week diet, a 12-week yeah. diet. Lifestyle, no, this is my lifestyle, eating lifestyle. Lifestyle, like lifestyle sounds forever. That's, Maintainable. That's the thing. And people, people, okay. I don't like the whole bulking and cutting either like from a bodybuilding standpoint yeah because we actually know what that means when we're bulking and cutting when we're bulking we're not necessarily ever getting from a healthy standpoint we're not getting out of shape we're adding on muscle tissue and we're upping our body fat and then we're lowering our body fat but it's never within getting, range yeah right? but it's never yeah. getting to where we're obese or out of shape because people look at me and i'll say oh i'm, I'm off season I look, i'm fat oh you're not you know it's like even you like, yeah. yeah yeah because it's it's we're, we we go from healthy to extremely you lean yeah and borderline hey what are you doing <laughs> yeah okay so, that kind of standpoint talk to me about the i know you talk to me about your old diet opposed to i oh, uh, sorry your old life eating lifestyle yeah. opposed to how you are now and when that changed yeah that's that's funny too because I, that's at a young age i started into the fitness industry as you know so working out like as like early teens i felt opposite of how I feel now, which is which is normal, working out, you can burn off what you eat. You know, I, as a kid, I was still a kid still, so I would do my broccoli and, I, and my rice, brown rice and my chicken breast, but I would have my cereal too. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be like, okay, I, I, can, I can have my cereal, work out, and then have broccoli and rice, and then work out, and then have cereal again. So I was, <laughs> I love know, that. I was you know, being a kid, and I was like, you know, that's something, people still do that, but that was my mistake. So I would diet for my, I would diet my first three or four bodybuilding shows like okay i'm gonna go to the store i'm gonna get this get this um candy bar i'm doing an hour of cardio today i got four weeks out i'll just do two hours of cardio today have a candy bar to my chicken rice so that it's that's let me touch on that yeah. it, a half an hour a half an hour workout how many calories are you gonna burn Man. if you're if you're working out hard what three four hundred maybe, maybe that maybe two three hundred yeah how that's, many calories in a candy bar yeah three four hundred all right yeah just just so people understand that that one candy bar cancels out your workout mm-hmm. So it's like that's it's one candy bar that's one slice of pizza that's one can of coke that's yeah. one coffee with yeah. frappuccino in the yeah. morning and mm-hmm. it's done for the day yeah. mm-hmm. most people don't understand how many calories are in the simple foods right. and, and what we mean by that too is like the whole idea that you possibly could have tapped into body fat that, that before that bar you can't you're at neutral or i'm out working so. a bad diet no you can't outwork a bad diet it's that's, it's impossible that's you said it right there you, 
you cannot work a bad diet. And being a kid, you don't, you know. But yeah, and it's might, different. As, maybe as a kid, you might yeah, and it's different when you like. I used to stay. I I kept abs in my twenties, right. just eating pretty regularly. But I mean, there's no way yeah. in hell it would happen today. That key word you're saying, you can't work a diet because when you're young, you eat the. When I was your, when I was in my twenties, I used to eat Twinkies and. I'm they like illegal now or something? Uh, yeah, some countries. And, and I'd have abs still. And I would do it. I'm out of shape. What's going on? I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing. You, can, you cannot work. Once you become an adult, I will say you cannot work a, a you know, bad diet. It's like, well, you, I was back in the days. So now you're an adult. Yeah, you, your metabolism is just yeah. firing when it's, you're young. You had, you had fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now let's get some structure. You know? Gotcha. So um, your, your bodybuilding diet, was it six meals? Was it eight meals? Yeah. I was doing the usual six meals. It was it was, it was six every, meals. Yeah, every every two hours. Damn. And, and and that was that was at like twelve, thirteen years old. And so. And how many calories are you having per meal? That's two. I didn't I didn't really track my calories, but looking looking at now. What, what would a, what would an average I, meal I be? Everything out. Yeah, the average average meal would probably be around three hundred calories. This was what I was cutting though. For like bulking. Gotcha. Bulking, I, I did. You're going nuts, yeah, yeah. Especially especially when you're going kid. Yeah, it's like okay, bulking. Gotcha. Like, I need like. The value menu, I need the, extra, you know, the value menu, and I need the large fries. And, you know, it's like I got large, okay. You know, yeah, cutting so, wise, it was. So your um your bodybuilding meal was probably like six meals a day, every single day, mm. for the last yeah. 10, 15 years of your yeah. life, right? Yeah, bring a few to school, bring a few to work, and that's just holidays. cooking, cleaning, prepping, mm. uh, shopping. No it, choice. You you be, in my personal experience, you become your life is dictated by your food Precisely. You, you're not free you mm-hmm. yeah. oh, i'm going out for two hours. oh sorry i'm going out for six hours i'm going to wake for eight hours i need to take x amount of meals mm-hmm. i haven't got x amount of meals ready i need to get up early and cook yeah. those meals yeah. package them take them with me yeah. i consider it's like your family that you're eating you're helping you're, you're cooking them you're taking them with you eating them buy more it's like i consider it like more like a, like a job itself. it's a it's a full-time it's, job it's a job it's so selfish too you're doing, with, you're doing it with your job and you're doing it with your kids it's like okay it's like three four jobs you have then so and it's not fun it's not fun to be around people like that mm-hmm. you got you lunch fucks yeah. and that circles back around it's like do i have to do that like well are you trying to change mr Limp- mr olympia or are you trying to just look like a guy who works out like, yeah like, uh, the workout part like well there's options so what when did that change when did fasting start in your life how old were you man um it was it was recently you know i I was definitely my late 20s because like i said i've always done these myself and i got to the point where i could look the way i I want to look and need to look when i compete still without doing multiple multiple meals yeah on top of of that too having the same like chicken and broccoli i can do certain types of, of food as well so that's one thing too like when you have someone who you trust in your corner to help you out with getting you to your goal and they're getting you to your goal you're usually like you're usually like okay yeah, we're good but you shouldn't at least me maybe yourself there's always maybe that why it's like hmm, i wonder if i can get this these same results a different way yeah that's where i'm not having to suffer and be because my mentality now for the last five years has always been like work work smarter not harder yeah when it's when it's applicable you know um but i i noticed during an off season eating three meals a day and then doing my cardio and still doing everything i usually do but with three meals a day I was still able to oppose the six. Oppose the six. Okay. I was able to save time and and I, for a keyword, save time. Um, and then for two, I actually did look look really well still. So um, were you were they spread out over the whole day, or was that, that in a, a time restricted? And that's the funny thing about it too, because without realizing it, I was I would, I would get up in the morning, I'd have my breakfast, get to work, have my lunch, and my third meal. And the rest of time, I would fast. I'd be doing other stuff. So I'd be oh, fasting gotcha. without realizing that I was So you, you started by accident. Yeah, without knowing gotcha. what I was doing, just, just me doing it off of convenience. Okay. Which is kind of what fasting is about. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a way to conveniently eat your meals. But yeah, I would do just three meals a day because I, I I was on the go. I was living in Hawaii. I uh, worked at GNC. Um, I worked at the commissary, which is like, like, the, like a military base version of Smith's or like Albertson's or grocery store, that is. Yeah. Then I did Papa, Papa John's delivery pizzas. I did, yeah. <laughs> Then I was going to school still too. You know, living in Hawaii, it's like you gotta, you know, gotta work to gotta, pay bills. Yeah, you gotta yeah. Pay your bills. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna eat all my calories the first three meals, and then the rest of the day I'm just gonna grind. And then gotcha. And I was like, man, I'm looking actually really good doing that. Like, why is why is that the case? And I never caught on to what the heck it was until you gotcha. Know, you hear about fasting later on. I was like, I was doing that. And See, you did you were fasting by accident. So when did you actually learn about fasting, and and who was it? It's probably as it was probably just you. Uh, well. Do you know Dr. Berg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Doc, Dr. Who's Berg. the first one you came across? Yeah, keto and fasting. Yeah. Got Dr. Berg is uh, supposedly he's a chiropractor, not actually not a doctor. Which is funny, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's got a YouTube channel and he's got a ton of really good information on yeah. keto and fasting and mm-hmm. every possibly possible thing you could want to know. Right. So I would check that out. Right, that's 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 true and. He looks great, doesn't he? Or is he a regular I mean, doctor? he's just a regular, skinny, yeah. healthy-looking dude. He, but he's very intelligent. He yeah. knows a lot about a lot of things. Yeah, he's not your quite. He doesn't look like your idol at all. Someone who you idolize regarding physique-wise, no. But and that's why he gets a lot of a lot of maybe like I don't say like hill people will will disagree in the bodybuilding industry with what he's yeah, saying. It, yeah, yeah, because he doesn't look like you. Yeah, and that's the thing. So it's like, okay, how about you try what he's doing? If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, then move on. And that's yeah, that's my approach. Let me, let me try let me, let me try this out this different lifestyle and it worked out for me and that means it can work it can maybe work for you maybe work yep. for you as well and you know and so on and so forth it's just it's it's preference when you started understanding that you were fasting what did you did you then really like make it like religious like that you were fasting for a certain period of time and yeah. like talk to me about kind of the yeah, of course. Yeah. the process that's, of that that's the thing too like once you actually go into actual fasting and you actually look into what fasting does like the benefits you know what how like how, how you find out why you're feeling better why you're sleeping better why you're looking better <laughs> you find out the actual benefits of fasting what it actually does to your body when you're actually not when you're actually not stressing your body out from feeding from feeding what people don't realize when you're eating you're actually stressing your body out and when you're not eating, you're giving your body a break to actually reset and digest and actually do do a lot more work, which is why when you sleep, it's so important. This is why sleep is so important because you're actually able to actually take a break and actually utilize all the calories you have stored and reset everything. So, Are you saying you sleep better um, in a fasted state because your body is at rest? I personally I personally feel that my body's not stressed out so I'll because most people maybe eat an hour or two before they go to bed. To yeah, abs- last, most people eat as they're going to sleep, yeah, right? that too. And, and they might sleep well, but I just personally... I felt that when I actually have at least six to eight hours without eating, which is wild for someone who bodybuilds with muscle and wants to maintain muscle. That's like the cardinal sin. That's like, like you can't do it's, that. It's unreal. You can't. You can't get anything with that. Yeah. Like, and then you're sleeping on top of that too. Like you, at sixteen hours without eating. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's like cardinal sin for bodybuilding. Yeah, but I'm like, but I'm feeling better. I'm training better. I'm feeling better. I train better fasted. I I, I talk better fasted. I. It's but it's you know it's like it's like man but everything you're looking at they're against fasting you know and then you see dr berg he's not jacked you see a lot yeah. of people about fasting and then you know so it's 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 taking that risk it's like okay this is what you need to do we know for a fact you can get like rhino in by eating eight meals a day and doing this and doing that it's like but is there another way to do it is there another way to do maybe, it maybe but do you want to try that like no it's not worth yeah it. it's like i think that's the thing right is everybody does it the same way that to, to, to go a different route it's like it's kind of shunned upon mm. In society in general, if yeah. you don't eat, you're crazy. Never mind as a bodybuilder. Yeah. Like you're, you're dumb. So that's uh, crazy. Is it true that sixty to seventy percent of your energy goes into digesting food? That's that's a key thing too, as well. Like that, how much energy your body needs to digest foods as well. So if you're always eating, your body's so much energy is just going digesting, digesting. If you're eating twenty four seven, which most people do, yeah, too. you're lacking. Of, and do you feel like that's why you get a lot more energy while being in a fasted state? Yeah that to your, your body's that's the one thing about stress you know when you're actually digesting the foods your body's using all the energy and that's causing more stress then once it finally finishes you're eating right again or right right towards the end of it it's, you're eating again so yeah you're loading back up like you're loading back up aren't you yeah and that's the thing too like it's it's really based off your goal like a lot of people they feel or they might they might need to you know i, I don't have anything against people who fast or don't fast i just my main thing is like is like could i achieve the results that i want personally with fasting, some people actually need to eat in the middle of the night and eat every two hours, even even throughout the night, every two hours, wake up and eat to get to their goal. Uh, but my particular goal for like a bodybuilding look and lifestyle, it, it, it works for me just doing three meals a day. Up till now, I'm just doing one meal a day. It, it works for me personally, and it, it feels better. How uh, how does someone get into fasting? Man, fasting is going to be something that we do anyways when we sleep. And we are working all day long, so it's more so just uh, learning about fasting. I'd say acknowledge, acknowledge, and learn what fasting actually is. And if you want to do like what you do, for instance, like a twenty-four hour fast sometimes, or like a sixteen-eight, or you actually do a very long duration of food, um, where usually you're used to eating every three, four hours because you yep. know breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'd probably say you know this maybe. For one, maybe do it. Actually, get an app to see your actual tracking time. Of yeah, Zero is the one that I use. Z E R O. It's a free app to fast. Uh, you hit it when you start. You hit it when you stop, and it tracks everything. That'd be your base because most people will say, "Okay, I talked to Brendan. 
he does 18 hours, I'm going to do that. Like, I would say get the app. Try and do eight hours. If you normally don't ever go more than four hours, maybe try six hours, right? You want to slowly, gradually. Slowly, it's, gradually, because then it's maintainable and yeah. it's achievable. Yeah. Your body's not going to overnight. It's, it's, and people think starving, oh, you're going to starve yourself. But you, you can't starve. It's not impossible. There's no yeah, I want to touch on this because the reason why we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner is because of the Industrial Revolution. It's because we started working eight-hour days. Right. And eat eat breakfast, eat at lunchtime, and then eat when you go home. Exactly. But people don't realize that for the last two and a half million years, we've been feeding and fasting. Mm -hmm. So that's a hundred thousand generations of human beings have been feeding and fasting, and the agriculture has been around for six hundred generations, right. and then industrial agriculture has been around for eight generations. No so put that in perspective: is for hundred thousand minus six hundred is being <laughs> feeding and fasting. Yeah. And we're okay, right? We're still here. Yeah. But would, what, is it more? Is it marketing? Is it the fact that fasting is sexy? Is it the fact that if you eat less, it's less money? Yeah. Like, it's, what is it? It's a know, combination of all, right? I feel, all, I feel definitely you said a combination of all. I feel, I feel it circles around to back to the money and the marketing. Like, why are we going to promote something that you can't really buy or do? Fasting doesn't cost. That's the thing too. Fasting doesn't. You can be a, a it's cheap. <laughs> if you're if you're a guy who's who's or, or who's really cheap. You would probably be sold on fasting. I'd do that in, if you knew the benefits and then knew the cost. But yeah, I wish I knew it when I was twenty. I would say yeah. this fortune. <laughs> One meal, okay. Oh, great. So, and that, that's one. That's one key hitting too was just, just just that. But a lot of times, yeah, it's like we're we were watching TV and radio stations and marketing, and we're we're just trained to to eat. We have to eat. Yeah, train to eat like monkeys, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's insane. It's just you hear enough of content and enough in your face, eventually you start to believe it. Yeah. And it's gotten worse over the, over the, you know, obviously over yeah. the years and decades. It's it's not sexy yeah. to not eat. It's not sexy, yeah. and it's not exciting to talk about. And it it's kind of it make, kind of makes you weird. Yeah, you kind of shun the idea of going out the, going without eating. You know, yeah, it's, it's not healthy. What you're doing? Like, so what um. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. What is the main benefits for you, you have experienced through fasting? And have they changed over time? I feel like the, the longer you, a lot, a lot of things too, the, the longer you do it, the more your body gets used to it. To where, Absolutely to where agree. it can be a good or a bad thing. With this being said, uh, fasting, I feel the more you do it, the, the more your body gets used to it in a sense of more rewarding. You're, you're more able to, at least for me, I'm able to actually, because for one thing with fasting, you, we know when you're fasting, your body's able to actually metabolize all of its glycogen stores. So in a sense of like anti-aging or a weight loss, your body's able to tap into the fat more more efficiently. So there's certain supplements that you can take or maybe like prescription things you take that can get prescribed that can drop you or put you into a depleted state to where you can actually turn on the fat burning switch. But I notice weight loss wise without getting, you know, talking to the big words and whatnot, but just in general, fasting in general, I noticed the uh, weight loss switch turns on more efficiently. It's and, easy to lose weight, right? And most of us, that's going to be our main thing. Most of us are are trying to gain muscle, but most of us, we, we're trying to lose weight. We're trying to lose weight. We're trying to lose weight. And we're trying things to lose weight. We're making steps towards losing weight. And a lot of times with, with, with me, when I'm actually fasting, I have the ability to lose weight without making very very much effort. It's not my amount of miles I run. Or I love what you said that, yeah. It's, it's just and like, it goes back to what you said, being smarter. That's that's my, not working harder, working yeah, smarter. Precisely. Yeah. So you being smarter by not looking for this um, nutritionist, like this granola bar is going to help you lose weight. You're like you being smarter by just if you don't have to eat it, you don't have to burn it off. Precisely. Yeah. And it's it's as simple as that, right? If you don't eat it, you don't have to burn it off. At all. Yeah. What what is body fat? Mm. I want people to understand what is body fat. Yeah. Yeah. Stored energy. You guys. You guys. Literally. It's, isn't it right? It's literally stored energy. So your body. We'll use it. <laughs> Once you burn through the energy you've, you've taken in, like we, we just had a double double, which we're lying obviously, but we just had a cheeseburger and fries. Once our body burns through that, we're not starving. Whether we're lean or not lean, we have body fat still, and we'll use that to actually use for fuel. That's our fuel source. We burn through our carbs first. After we burn through our carbs, we burn through our fat. That's stored energy. Like I said, my son, he knows what body fat is. Yeah. You, ask him, you ask most adults, what's the body fat? Oh, it's just. Horrible stuff. It's it's not. It's like no yeah. What, like what is body fat? It's like so when you fast, your body taps into those fat fat stores, and a lot of times your body actually likes doing that because it needs to actually get rid of some stored energy. <laughs> yeah, people don't. I don't think people realize that by eating excess food, you can only burn so many calories. Those right. calories that don't get burnt get converted into body fat. Exactly. 
and it's like we're say what 10 percent, 11 percent body fat right now right right um you and i are still got at least 40 days of body fat on our body without eating a single thing easy it's insane, right? Yeah, yeah. Water hydration will be good, good to go. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and that's I, and I cannot stress that enough. If you and I don't eat for the next month, we will survive, and we'll maintain most of our muscle. We'll yeah. just be walking around shredded. Yeah, well, it's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's if we did, if we if we did that, that was most we obviously would never do that because yeah, I'm not telling yeah, people yeah. go out and do that. <laughs> I just want people to understand that your body fat is energy. Because people really like this is why I said. Which is what you just said too, but my version of saying that I was like, there's no, there's no such thing as starving to death. You can be malnourished, you can be dehydrated, you can be out of out of oxygen. Yeah, that can kill you. Yeah. But if you are actually going a whole week without eating, you're not starving to death. Your body literally knows how to adapt. Okay, I'm not being fed. I'm gonna tap to my stored energy. You know. Yeah. It's just more so, you know, mentally being able to actually prepare yourself to not eat for that long, and that's a whole different. <laughs> mental and energy. honestly, and for me. Uh, the, the hardest thing about fasting was mental for me, hundred percent. It was like skipping breakfast for the first time in thirty nine years was the hardest, one of the hardest things I ever did because it went against every bodybuilding mag I'd ever read, every person I'd ever talked to, everything my parents had always told me. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. All the marketing went behind that, mm-hmm. and I skipped breakfast, and I realized that it didn't make any difference. No difference. And I haven't had breakfast since. Mm-hmm. And it's the best, I haven't had lunch since. Yeah, yeah. It's the best thing I've ever possibly done in my life. Yeah. And then you break down what, break, what actually break fast means. Breakfast, break fast. Yeah, breakfast. yeah. It's like, you can have that any time of the day then. Okay, you're just breaking it fast. I, I, there's a doctor on YouTube and he's like, the, best, the most important meal of the day is the one that you have. Yeah. Well, doesn't matter when it is. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's your first meal of the day. It's the most important meal of the day. Like it doesn't have to be breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um. The benefits of just overall benefits of fasting. What can you kind of what can you kind of tell me? Yeah. Like I've you touched on the weight loss side. What yeah. are, what else comes with it? Well, you know, overall overall with fasting in general, like you will depend on the person, obviously too as well. So we'll just give like a general scenario. If you're an individual who has a lot of issues with brain fog and recalling certain things like memory issues as yep. well, you know, it could be you just you have way too much glycogen, you have too much carbs, too much sugar. Um, once you actually are able to actually lower that sugar and, st- and more so stabilize your blood sugar, maybe you're insulin, insulin uh, resist- resistant. Yep. So once you're able to actually adapt and become insulin sensitive again, you might notice just better overall cognition and overall better memory as well. And that's one thing too, like it, it plays a big role with hormones. A lot of times too, your hormones will actually balance itself out. So where maybe you're sleeping better because your hormones are balanced out. Your hormones aren't out of whack because you're okay. fasting, you know. So a lot of us have issues with with sleep. A lot of us have issues with this overall being more attentive and recalling certain things. And that could be due to our hormones being out of whack. And something simple as fasting, which is not going to be a diet change. It's more so changing your eating window. That can actually, you know, change people's perception on how they actually, you know, are able to actually work and function. And even recall certain things like, oh, you if you have an actual family where your kid might go to baseball at this time and your daughter goes here and your husband needs this that's a lot of things to recall in general but let alone um let alone actually having a really bad diet that's that's actually throwing off your you know cognition in general yeah and trying out fasting and that's one thing that i know most people see and most people i work with client wise they notice regarding just their cognition regarding just being able to actually recall this is fasting not not dieting because a lot of times you could diet brain and whatnot but when you're actually you know going times where actually like letting your, letting your blood sugar actually balance out and over 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 time that is you'll notice that you just feel better and a lot of times when they say feel better it's just more so you're able to focus better and sharper right it's better and it's like man i can definitely recall more things i'm talking sharp it's like you just you focus like, right yeah it's like you don't it reminds you know, of that limitless maybe with um the natural approach yeah yeah <laughs> it's like the nat- i find the longer i fast the sharper i get right and when i really start to get to that 20 22 hour mark i really start to get sharp yeah. and a lot of times people people maybe don't have the best the best approach because they don't have they don't have they don't they don't I don't say not doing it right, but you have to actually know, you know, what to eat when you break your fast. Mm. You, to, you still, I still think you should have a, a nice balanced diet still. I still feel, going back to what we said before with the labs, knowing what you're actually deficient in. And all those things can help you out while you're fasting. So it's a lot of times people, oh, I fasted, but I just feel really like, like well, well, something's probably needs to be, something's probably underlined that you haven't really addressed yet. Yeah. With that being said, because like you go back to time, you know, we were hunters and gatherers. That this, it's, there's no negative thing in fasting. If you have health issues, different story, but talking, speaking 
amongst the general population that have no health issues that are, just health, that are healthy, there's nothing underlying or going on, you can fast with no problem. It's just more so knowing knowing how to do it and actually what to be eating when you actually break your fast and actually, you know, what's going on internally regarding if you have anything underlined to start with before yeah. you go too fast. Okay. And then, like you mentioned before, it's so much cheaper, isn't it? Oh, I, I personally would yeah. eat, oh, let's say, 75% less food than I ever have in my entire it's life. Wild. Yeah. Which is absolutely well, insane. Yeah. I'm, I weigh 230 pounds. Well, yeah. I'm not the smallest kid around. Mm. And I eat so little. I, 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 it, sometimes it blows my mind how little I do eat. Right. And I'm not starving. I'm not losing muscle. I'm not lacking energy. Mm. And I know you're on the same yeah. page, right? Yeah. I was going to say, uh, I joke around with some of my clients. I, my clients I have now say, you guys should go on the COVID diet. What's that? Fasting? <laughs> Where you yeah. literally feed your family one meal a day and tell them to suck it up because it's it's... For one, it's inexpensive, and then for two, you can make it fun. Not saying that to you guys to do this, but I had some clients who wanted to do that, where they had it to where they let their they let their family choose like one meal of the day. What do you guys want? Doesn't matter what it is, Chuck E. Cheese or gotcha. pizza, or you know, they'll then they'll that'll be the that'll be their one meal, and it'll be every now and then, I guess too. But I, I was it was more so like a joking, you know, as, as an adult, if you are trying to save money yourself, just do one meal a day. You'll yeah, and you'll live. And your pockets will be, you know, they won't be as empty. <laughs> Huge difference. <laughs> so, you know. And another thing too, the uh, for me personally, the appreciation of food. Oh boy, yeah, <laughs> big time, right? You appreciate your food so much more than you have in your entire life. Simple. And you look forward to that meal, and that meal tastes amazing. Right. And I'm guessing you yeah. totally agree on that one. Say, and, it's, and it's your choice. Like, hey, you don't feel bad having that one meal because what did you have today? Yeah, and it, it, whether it's a bad meal or a good meal, even a good meal. Like, mm-hmm. even I just have some granola and yogurt, it's the best granola yeah. and yogurt I've had for exactly. a day. And, and then it's not going to kill you once again going out, going without eating. It's just more so, hey, you, it's a choice and it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle, it's a choice. It's, it's not a diet, you know, it's, it's, it's really just eating based off your needs. If you, well, some people literally are, you know, balling on a budget, we'll say, you know, and, and, and they want to find the best approach. You know, if you are, most people, people in general go days, days, they'll go hours without eating because they're on the go with work. Yep. Wait till, you know, from the morning, for me, from the morning till evening, I'm on the go. And I make time to eat, but if I don't, if I had a choice, I would just eat dinner, you know? Yeah. So most people, like if you have a husband and wife, they'll be on the go, they'll have their coffee. And then when they get home, have their no choice. That's something that people do anyways, but they don't realize that they're doing it. And that can literally be something you do all the time. That can be a lifestyle. And if you're feeling maybe off, it can maybe maybe adjust what you're eating nutrient wise. Yeah, that circles back around the labs too. Maybe blood works off, but it's it's really just um, a lot of positive. And that there's so much. I think the negativity behind like fasting, it's not healthy. You're starving is because, you know, where's the money in that? You know, where's where's the marketing in that? You know, where, what can we use to actually? Yeah. Uh, there's, there's nothing you can really do too much with that here. A lot of people don't stop and just critically think or do the research. Oh, boy. Yeah, and and before, before I personally started fasting is I researched it. Like, before I do anything, I researched it like crazy. Right. I read every book I could find. I watched every video, every podcast I could possibly find until I'm at a point where I could teach it quite comfortably. And then I don't just dive in and do a two-day fast. I ease my way in. I right. see how I'm feeling, and I adapt. I change. Mm. Don't be stupid about it. But like you said, <laughs> we've done it forever. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, some celebrities or people that people would know in public who fast. Who I, Terry Crews comes to mind. Yeah. Who else? Mm-hmm. He's a big boy. Yeah. And he, he, I think, pretty sure he does OMAD. Yeah. And a lot of celebrities, people who do celebrity diets for, for celebrities, they'll have them on regiments of fasting. We don't say any names at all. People who I know who are celebrity trainers that have had clients they work with, they put them on a fasting regimen. But it's, just, yep. it's literally just time for they, where they don't eat. And it, it, because it's, it's, it's much easier. And a lot of times, too, like just for a celebrity standpoint, a lot of times they're, they're busy. They're, they're so busy, all right? All all right, so I want to touch uh, touch on autophagy. Um, so what is autophagy? How does it work? Why is it important? I'm sure most people have never heard of the word. Yeah, exactly. All right. So in general, autophagy is more so, you know, your body eating itself. And even hearing that, I would think it's kind of creepy. Doesn't sound good, does yeah. it? <laughs> Sounds like a bad thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's literally, you know, your body able to actually reset and pretty much help out with the kind of maintenance. I, call, I consider it spring cleaning. 
yeah. for the body. You know, things that need to be clean, any kind of debris, any, any extra things that's in the body that, that do not need to be there. So excess proteins, isn't that? That can literally lead to, you know, negative. You know, yeah. We, we won't, you know, things that might lead to cancer, things that might need, lead to tumors, things that might lead to more muscle wasting or, or, or even, even fat storage. It's, it's your body's ability to actually clean things up to make your body healthier and restore and reset. It's a nice reset. So autophagy meaning like self-eating. Um, and to get into autophagy is to fast. Correct. Right. And you do need to fast for what period of time before you yeah. start tapping into autophagy? Yeah. A lot of, you might see a lot of different things, but generally speaking, you just like, what, two, 48 hours, 47, two hours? Yeah, I think it's like at least 24 to, to get into mildly, right? Yeah. Putting on, you know, the, the workouts, there's... There are people who are against like the the whole autophagy um, or could, regarding like not eating that is. They'll say if you actually are training, you can increase autophagy. You know, if there's okay. a particular way of training or duration of training that can actually do it, nat- do it not naturally, but do it a different way. Opposed different to eating as yeah. well, you know, because some of us actually are trying to perform. So we eat for performance and we try to, we want to get that benefit too. So I just think uh, between studies there, it's, it's a lo- lot deeper dive and a little more stringent when you actually do it through fasting. Yeah. And I think it goes, it's just as important doing it through training as well. And if you can do both, then why not? Yeah, double whammy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And autophagy isn't like, it's not for your looks, it's for longevity and for your health. Right. Because your body will clean up bad cells, which eventually leads to cancer, diabetes, um, clogs in arteries, right. things like that. Sticky proteins that basically become bad in your body. Right. And your body will self-clean it itself. Mm-hmm. And there's a uh, statistic out there. If you do a seven-day fast once in your lifetime, the chances of you can reduce your uh, oh, that's right. you can reduce your risk of cancer by up to seventy mm-hmm. percent. Yep. Uh, no, it was seventy. It was at least seventy yep. percent. So by not eating for a full week once in your mm-hmm. lifetime, you reduce your risk by cancer by seventy percent. That's insane, yep. right? Just one week only. Just one week in your entire life. Never mind if you do that once a year or once every right. six months. Right. Uh, I'm not saying you're gonna live forever, but I guarantee you're gonna be a lot healthier than someone yeah. who doesn't. That, that's is it worth it to some people? Like, I man, it's hard to do. And that's the thing too, right? It's, it's. A, I talk about this a lot. It's a, it's a um, reward versus sacrifice thing. Right. Like for some people, ah, uh, yeah, to to diet here is not worth it for me. Mm. Or to fast, it's not worth it until until it is worth it. Yeah. Until you got diabetes, well, it's not until it's, it's, it's last. It's like not last minute, but when it's too late, are you waiting too long, or something serious happened to your health? Yeah. You choice, but to but to try it. I suppose you had plenty of options to do it without. But yeah, that's. Yeah, it's how do you how do you kind of motivate someone to? Because I mean, eventually something's going to happen, right? Some of us are di- are just different in general, you know. Uh, I, I think it's it's cool when you have the ability to give information like like so out there like free information free advice a lot of people they want they want money you know uh, in return for for their service i I feel like as much as possible um people giving free services you know towards health and wellness and just overall you know preventative disease um is is pretty cool and and it's not really an excuse anymore to not really be educated or not make the effort to actually you know know about these things but um I think I think it's more so not being lazy for one, but also just um, really making an effort to actually look at, look into the, the 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 excuse in general of like not having the money to afford to be healthy is mm. kind of is kind of being brought to life to where that's BS. You can't just stick your head in the sand these days, right? It's yeah, literally. It, yeah, <laughs> you you can't just uh, yeah. It's I'll be okay. I'll smack his ear. So this it's it's there's certain facts out there. There's certain information. Uh, the autophagy, there's a Nobel Prize won it on in medicine in 2016. So it's not fluff. At all. It, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's fact. It's, whether it's you, fact. Yeah, whether people think so or not, it's, 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 it's out there. It, it's, it's the fact that when that study came out and he won the prize, it's people, a lot of light bulbs went off, but still, a lot of people still, the negative energy spreads mm. so much more than positivity. And people like these, all the excuses they can, oh, it's not healthy for me to do fasting, I got to eat. My blood sugar is gonna bother me. Like, yeah, I, I can't go without eating, and or, yeah, or I can't, yeah. So, but at the same time, you're you're obese, and you might lose a leg. Uh, I can't do anything about that. It's like, what? If, you know, <sighs> my doctor, it's like, so it's like, yeah. There's, there's, it's once again the key word is effort. A lot of times, it requires a lot of effort and a lot of trying and a lot of actually repeating and and switching. It's it's not an easy thing. It's mm. not a, 
one fix all, one stop shop, and for and for some people it is, but most people, like literally most people, it's not. Unfortunately, you gotta really put the effort in. The w- the one thing I struggle with it's very painful to talk to certain people because they're just very stubborn and very narrow minded, or they're just not open to other things. How do you? Yeah. How do you kind of get across to those people? What 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 do you got to kind of do yeah. for? Yeah, my, my, my approach behind it is, is like, I always say it because a, a lot of trainers will train people like that and they'll be super against it, but they're willing to pay as well. I, I, my whole thing is just is just be is have patience. Have patience and I won't say stand your ground necessarily, but that would be kind of a strong word to use. I would say be patient and just be, be informative. Maybe do a try a little bit more each day. That's, I, I've had clients that came around um, because, you know, my approach – was the way I approach it is regarding, you know, talking about fasting, talking about, you know, certain diets that might be better based off their lifestyle opposed to them thinking this is what they need because their last coach had them on this. And I'll slowly talk to them about, about the different approach. And then, you know, while they're doing what they feel is gotcha. right. Gotcha. And it will slowly start to come around. Things I'll say, this is what you're doing before, but this is, this is why this won't work this time because this is what's going on. And they'll be against it. But after a while, they'll just slowly understand and that's that's when it too we mentioned people who are stubborn it's like a lot of people have to learn the hard way but a lot of people just need just need a little more guidance just need a little more patience with someone who who has the patience to help them out along okay the way, explain to them and find out kind of speak their language i guess that's a key word to use to speak their language yeah. based off of because some people who are stubborn they'll go off of I, I only trust you because i like you we relate but cordell for instance you know i, I don't really trust his approach because i don't really know him like that i don't really you know really really kind mm. of, I don't really like his approach because I don't know him as well as you. And so whatever you say, I'm going to go with. Whatever he says, I'm like I'm kind of going to be. Yeah, yeah, sense. okay. And I'm slowly telling him certain things or telling her certain things, and then I'm justifying why this didn't work for her. And then she she's starting to come around, and then that's usually how it works out. You know, and if not, it's usually they get have a really serious issue to where they're like, oh man, okay, this approach isn't working at all. Gotcha. So like, and uh, I feel like leading my example is huge. Big time. Like looking the way you do, being as lean as you do, being as strong, being as healthy, me doing the same thing. People start to listen to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, like the cold therapy, I'm riding to the cold shower, I was riding the cold therapy, and most people think it's crazy. And oh. it's not till you do it for such a long period of time and you keep preaching about it and you don't get sick and you boost your immune system that right. people start to listen. Mm-hmm. And th- did it happen overnight? No. <laughs> Is it still slowly happening? Yes. I'm yeah. still trying to convert yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's not easy and it's hard, but is it worth it? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But maybe eventually you'll be teaching me about doing ice baths because yeah. I've I've bugged you enough about yeah. it. Yeah. Where you're like, okay, I'm really going to have to give this a shot. That's, that's taken off a lot. These ice baths, and things you can buy that, that that literally make cold water for you. And yeah, I'm I'm such an advocate. I've I think I've had three cold shower baths since the leg workout yesterday, and I know tomorrow I'm going to be absolutely fine because of that. That's so it's out. it's out there too like people who are skeptic about it like ah, you get sick from that you might get hypothermia it's like keep continue reading about it continue you know yeah. and then Conti- keep learning thing, yeah. and don't just and just slowly ease your way into yeah. things yeah. and yeah. gotcha uh, just to finish off with so just briefly main things you tell people someone trying to change your life change your circle of friends get healthier get motivated right. just live longer yeah. how do you what do you say to someone a lot of it, most people are going to be like set in their ways um those people who are looking for a direction but those people who are open say for example the people who are open they have no direction at all but they are open to actually you know learning and, and wanting to understand and wanting my guidance so you're um, saying being open just being open in the yeah, first place to yeah, start so, off with so, yeah so if you're actually that's one thing too the first step is actually being open being We'll say vulnerable because you have to be you have to show some vulnerability because if a lot a lot of times you're taking on a whole different approach that you haven't done before because apparently the approach that you were doing before your current approach wasn't working so you have to kind of be somewhat vulnerable to actually being open to try something totally new if that is the case that you're going to do but a lot of times a lot of us don't like change that just circles back around you know yeah we, we, a lot of us we're it, it's so much easier to be set in your ways it's so much easier to be saying oh, i just take these diet pills and i and i lose weight so I know eventually I'm going to lose weight. I'm just going to keep on trying. I'm, it's like, you don't realize it at all, but you're out of your comfort zone. You're, once you get out of your comfort zone, you'll actually lose the weight, and then you'll realize, man, okay, I, I had to change that. But until you actually make that change, you won't have a change. You know, and it's, it's easier said than done. So having someone that you actually, back to what I was saying before with, you know, that, that client personally liking you better than me, like having someone that you kind of, like whether it, be, whether it be someone that you saw on TED Talk or you, whatever it may be, something that, that gravitates towards you. So a lot of times when you have someone that you're working with, it's gotta be, 
it's like it's like you guys are involved relationship wise. You guys are involved to where you guys have that chemistry. So kind of resonate with each other, right? You resonate keyword, with a certain person. Keyword, yeah. yeah. So that, that's the thing too. Like like you said, you know, if, if you look the part, like hey, okay, this person looks the way I want to look, and I like their approach regarding what they're saying, and I want to try it out. That's that's the first the first step. You know, Thomas Delara is first thing that comes to mind for myself. I forgot about look, him. Yeah, look, like, looks the part. Someone I resonate with. Mm-hmm. Someone kind of does similar things. Yeah. Someone to look up to. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, not over the top. Just yeah, someone that you can you look like uh, it looks. What's the key word I'm, I'm looking to use? It, it looks it looks feasible. Someone it, it looks ideal, like it's not too over the top. Someone who who looks like something that something that you can achieve. A lot of yeah. us we don't want to be mass monsters, but we want to look like we can take a shirt off on the beach. Yeah. Thomas Delauer, he can take a shirt off year round on yeah. the beach, and he explains to you in videos why he can and how you can. Yeah. And so that's how he has able to sell his customers, you know, on on whatever they actually need to try out. So having someone who you feel is that same approach. But it actually works for you. And that's the thing, too. Like, a lot of us who we might get results from somebody and then it might not actually work out. And then we, st- we stick with the person so we don't move on. So I don't say stick and move approach, but you know, it's back to working smarter, not harder. If you feel that your your approach isn't working at all, then you might have to, you know, circle back around and see what else is going on. Um, but just, just, to, just to wrap it up, I, I, would, I would literally say it, it's, it's not a plug-and-play type of thing. You have to really have someone who's in your best interest and you have to really address everything A through Z because your body is going to continue to change um, hormonally just as you get older, you know, things change. So you might have a diet you were doing last year that worked great and this year it's not doing anything for you at all. Doesn't mean continue to continue uh, doing the same diet. It means you need something different to okay. actually add to the table. So a lot of us, without realizing it, because this is based off clients, a lot of us without realizing it, we stick to the same thing because it worked before opposed to it working now we don't okay. we don't accept or maybe even acknowledge or even like you know see that it's not working and it takes us a little longer to actually adjust so having someone who is able to actually work with you as your body changes and and, and telling you hey let's just change it up because it's what you need this time so the key word too is trusting also trusting someone who you feel can actually is in your best interest all the time and and that's easier said than done <laughs> okay which is why a lot of us have the issues we have today and then the the last thing is i feel like so many people care about other people's opinions oh and that and that really holds people back from starting a business going to the gym mm-hmm. trying to better themselves because they're worried about a failing failing in front of the partner failing in front of the family giving up um I'm, I'm very different if i've got a goal i literally i'll literally tell everybody and anybody and i'll make it so public that before it makes me accountable yeah, but i'm very different right. i know no, i'm very different yeah. and if i fail i still couldn't care less right. um how, what what do you tell someone like how, how does someone step out of that comfort zone and yeah, and question. not care good question yeah that's that's that seems to be like the hardest thing a lot, a lot of us have that issue um and a lot of it too is like it's just seeing leading by example you know have people like yourself who they see that and, and then the, the, the thing about it too that's that's one beauty of social media is seeing someone who has content and, and, and that same content being produced day after day after day it's like someone tell you telling you to make your bed make your bed make your, you're eventually gonna you know make your watching bed watching that so progression and that journey that's the thing about it and this person who you maybe idolize or you might see this person is like a, they're a clown they're weird they're doing they're constantly doing this constantly doing that and it's like and they're doing it, and they're doing it, and they're doing it. It's, it's showing that that accountability. So that might, it, the key word too is like, okay, if, if he can do it, I can do it. That kind of thing. Is, gotcha. Is kind of, kind of. And that that allows you to get outside of your circle, doesn't it? Because it could be someone over in Russia that you're you're watching and you're yeah, idolizing. It just clicks for you, personally. Yeah, that's interesting. Whereas you wouldn't have had that back at, at some point. And that's the thing too. Is like less excuses these days, unfortunately. So it's like, man. And it's so much free. It's, it's it's so much free. The keyword is free out there. You can't. There's less excuses because it's like I don't have time. But it's on your phone. I don't have the money. Well, it's free. It's like all your excuses are kind of being. Yeah. Like, oh, like, I can't eat. Well, you can fast. It's like so. It's like. Eh. One thing I one thing I know about excuses is they just get you more excuses. They yes. it never it, things will never change by making excuses. Literally. Gotcha. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, That was amazing. I learned a ton. Hopefully you guys got some value out of that. And uh, we'll see you next time.